Uh, parents or grandparents, again, you're welcome to keep them here if you would like. Uh, otherwise, now's the time to get them to class. Amen. And those of you staying with me in the sanctuary, you can turn to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Thank you, God. Amen. Let me see. Is Rhonda here? Rhonda, per chance? <gasps> Rhonda, did you send me a text? That's you? It is so nice to have you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'll answer any questions you have afterwards, all righty? <laughs> Amen. Yesterday when I was at my daughter's apartment, um, Amen. And, you know, it was nighttime and she had gone to bed and she's got a bookcase and she's got pictures galore of family and friends hanging up refrigerator, the walls. Amen. I couldn't help but look at one or two books, you know, there on the shelf. And um, it touched my heart when I saw some papers and uh, I saw that she had written down things. Some of them were things that I had said. Folks, if you want to make pastor happy, <laughs> take notes. <laughs> and, and then wait a couple weeks and say, remember what you said? And, tell, you know, and I'll go, mm -mm. but then you'll tell me and I'll go, yo, yeah, I say that. Folks, I've been preaching long enough that I, I, I'm repeating myself at this point. I can't hardly come up with too much new to say. Uh, I pray that somehow it resonates new in your ears. Um, with that, Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, verse 15. And uh, the Lord says through the prophet Isaiah uh, to his people at that time, although you have been forsaken and hated, with no one traveling through. I will make you the everlasting pride and joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. And then you'll know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Folks, you're not the first, nor will you be the last person of God to be in a tough situation. As a matter of fact, when you read the scriptures, that's pretty much the story. Is tough situation after tough situation after tough situation. Of course, when you read the story, much like our lives, quite a few of those tough situations we've brought on ourselves. Didn't maybe know as good as we know now. Sometimes we did know and it just didn't matter. With our sin nature which causes us to want to always do things our way. Ever notice that folks? We like things done our way. <laughs> <laughs> All of us have that propensity. Every day I need to wake up and remind myself that I need to follow him in his ways. The children of Israel have this long history from Genesis, uh, you know, through the end of the Old Testament of tough circumstances. Of course, sometimes tough, some, some tougher than others, all right? 
But I, 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 you heard me say there is no pain like the present pain. There is no pain like the present pain. So for the children of Israel at this time that Isaiah is prophesying, they are, uh, uh, the northern kingdom uh, is uh, under attack by the Assyrians. Uh, the nation of Judah will likewise have to face that new world power. And for the northern nation, they will succumb to the Assyrian invasion. And Isaiah prophesies. Folks, sometimes it's good not to know everything that's going on. We think that we would like to know the future. But folks, most of us can't hardly handle the present. <laughs> if you actually knew some of the hardships that are yet before you, you'd be crippled now. So God really does know best and mostly not letting us know too much about that. But through the prophets at times, he would open up that window that we call the future. And it was going to be a difficult time because of the Assyrian um, uh, invasion. But even before it has fully happened, though they are already feeling the effects, feeling forsaken and hated, with things shutting down, no one traveling through the, the country, yet nonetheless God is able to project even further and tell them that there's ever, uh, everlasting pride and, and joy um, uh, there's going to be provision that ultimately they may know that, that he's the Lord. He's their Savior, their Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Because of our tendency, you guys, in the midst of our problems, to lose sight of that. To lose sight of him and who he still is. But God throws out restoration hope. I like the way the psalmist, and you keep your place there in Isaiah, because I'm going to read another verse from that same chapter. But you guys, I want you to, um, to understand me, to understand people in Christ which hopefully includes you. And if you're not there yet to this state that I'm going to describe, uh, to understand that this is where God wants you to be, okay? And uh, Psalm 126, because God has been doing this cycle for so long, In Isaiah, he acknowledges, matter of fact, he's telling them it's going to get worse, but it will get better. But in Psalm 126, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, in other words, of the chosen people, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with Songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Folks, there's a testimony. Okay? The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. This is when the Lord restored the fortunes. So, uh, verse four, restore our fortunes, Lord. Like streams uh, in the Najiv. And that Najiv area was mostly a desert unless you came across a stream. 
So it was a good thing if you were traveling in that land between Egypt and modern day Israel, uh, uh, referred to as the Najib. Um, oh boy, you were thankful for every stream of water that you found there. Listen to this, folks. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. I mean, that's quite a picture. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, folks, if you'll stay faithful, if you're carrying seed, carrying seed, and, and can I tell you that spiritually seed a lot of times is word of God, promises of God. will return with songs of joy, <laughs> carrying sheaves with them. Sheaves is the end product, you guys, of seed that has fallen to the ground and been watered and nurtured. There is hope of sheaves, of a harvest, of a positive thing. Those who sow with tears. You guys, I couldn't help but think, so Lord, you know, because uh, I'm not exempt. You know, for years, because I've lived in this community almost all my life, people say, oh, you're that smiley guy. <laughs> and you'll go, yeah, him. <laughs> but folks, no one's exempt from the hardships in this life. No one. It's more a question of how you handle those hardships. It's not avoiding them. Spiritual success is how you handle them. And there is something about that word picture that just strikes me because I, 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 I think it's saying that if you'll take those tears of hardships and, and uh, difficulties coupled with word of God, if you'll hold on to it, if you'll keep trusting God, then the tears that you cry water that seed. To the point that a harvest comes up. So that today's tears are watering the seeds that will produce our next crop. Folks, if you can grab that, that puts a different perspective on some of our tears. Some of our sweat. It'll help you understand, you guys, uh, a mature enough Christian. Because you can't keep a good Christian down. You cannot keep a good Christian down. Folks, it's not just that I'm an optimist. I'm an et eternal optimist. Amen. That's what word of God speaks to me. Psalm 30. And I could go on for a long time. Reading various scriptures, folks, that indicate that this is how God would have his people to live. And that is a faith-filled life. Even in the midst of their difficulties. Even when they, circumstances are squeezing the tears out of you or fine, then let them water the seed. The word of God, the promises of God. And watch God produce a harvest. Psalm 30, uh, the first couple verses. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. 
Folks, and, 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 and you know, the, the greatest enemy is Satan. You know, and Satan, um, Satan don't have the last word. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ has the last word. Amen. And you know whose side I'm on? Jesus Christ's side. <laughs> Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Hallelujah. Huh, Edwin? You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. And sometimes, folks, let's acknowledge that's how we feel. We're dry, and it looks desolate, and it looks impossible, and um, uh, we don't see our own way out. And we're, 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 we're pretty much done in our minds. But, Lord, you brought me up from the realm of the dead. Now, what's interesting is we've been there before. Almost any person of any amount of age can tell you a time in their life prior to where you are today where you thought the same thing. That there was no possible way of continuing forward. But God saw you through. Amen? Yeah. But there's something about the present situation, and I understand that. So, Lord, you brought me up from the realm that you spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. That means you full of faith people. Praise his holy name. For his anger. And folks, sometimes that's what we're dealing with. Lasts only a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. And here's the verse. Weeping may stay for the night. But rejoicing comes in the morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you guys now go back to Isaiah 60. Um, what did Pastor Ben preach last week? Anybody? An updated experience. Thank you, Virginia. How'd you remember that? You just did? Come. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, you guys, that's the way it works. <laughs> Amen. She, he's got some notes from last week, and I've preached about an updated experience. Um, you guys, and the reason I'm bringing it up, because this is like part two, but it's not, it's not an update. Look at verse 17. So this God, and we started, although you have been forsaken and hated, no one traveling through, uh, I will make ever, you the everlasting pride, the joy of all generations. You will drink. Uh, you'll know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And listen to verse 17. Instead of bronze, I'm going to bring you gold. And silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze. And iron in places of stones. You guys, if last week I preached on uh, an updated experience, you guys, today I want to talk to you about God's Upgraded. God's upgrade. God's upgrade. You see, because of his promise of restoration, of going through the process, uh, uh, one of the ladies testified, you know, going, you know, so not running, but literally just, yeah, you know what? You're right where God wants you. Hard to believe. But he means to bring you out. And folks, when he brings you out, you will experience an upgrade. Bronze will become gold. Iron will become silver. Wood becomes bronze. Stone becomes iron. Each one of those is a step up. 
Okay? And let me tell you what, that is how God works. It's this step-by-step process. You'll know it's God and that you're handling it well and that what he is ultimately trying to do is happening in your life when you sense an upgrade, an improvement in you. Not that you reach a point where you don't have any more problems. That's not even what he's talking about. He's simply saying, trust me, keep being faithful, cry if you have to, but at least let it water the seed, and watch me work in you. And I do like you guys. These are what I call relative upgrades. They're, you know, um, um, in the sense that, uh, you know, from iron all the way up to bronze, you know, and I, I, and, and I would say that speaks to where are you? What are you currently in Christ? Because we're not all at the same place. And that's why it's foolish for us to compare ourselves with ourselves. All right, just be thankful that you're in the ball game with Christ. Hallelujah. If you have given your life over in faith to Jesus Christ, you're, 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 you're some kind of material in God. And he is willing to take you from where you are to a place just a little bit higher. And that's how you know that it's God and that you're handling it well. Because when it's all said and done, you'll realize, oh, I am better in God. Amen. By definition, you guys, uh, an uh, update has to do with timing. Okay? An upgrade, by definition, is to raise to a higher standard. That's an upgrade. To improve in quality, uh, to progress is another simple definition of an upgrade. And our modern world, you guys, is very much... Uh, and, and attuned to the concept of upgrading. Is it not? Isn't it? We're constantly confronted with it. You know, the credit card that you currently have, that's not the real good one. <laughs> At least if you hear the advertisers, what's in your wallet? Right? Right? They want you to upgrade and get that better one. Um, you guys, our, 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 our cars, our homes, we're forever being told not good enough up here. Come get some of this. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I... I you know, I, I, I bought a, a, a little Mazda 3 a couple of years ago. It's been almost six years now. They've been trying to buy that car back ever since. <laughs> I get advertisements from them directly saying, we really need your car. But we have another one for you. And they show me the picture of the new shiny you know, model of the year one. <laughs> and they offer me that upgrade. And... Um, you guys, appearance, you know, there's always the better you. No matter how you get there. Uh,
Have you had a... All right, but, but you, at New York... Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. They were motorized. And, 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 and uh, you know, they're motorized to where they can go near 30 miles an hour. And, and they even said it on, as part of the report. It seems like our um, technology has exceeded our legalities. That's the problem right now with those things. They don't know how to treat them. Because while um, it seems rather small, you get hit by somebody going on that thing at 30 miles, near 30 miles an hour, which is happening. Should it be out on the street or should it be on the sidewalk? They don't know. And also, uh, you don't have to hit anybody. All you have to do is fall off of one. <laughs> going at that rate of speed. Oh, and you will be hurting. You guys, that's just one example. And you hear it all the time that our technology has exceeded our medical advances. That technology has exceeded our ethics. That technology has exceeded our legalities. But you guys, with this idea of, of technology and consumerism, uh, um, I want to remind us that all progress involves change, but not all change is progress. So I'm going to say something that, that, that uh, I, I want you to be empowered in case no one else is willing to say this to you. But here it comes. To be able to say, this is good for me for now. I'm choosing to focus elsewhere. In other words, when, when something is being presented to you, but in reality, you're, you're pretty good with where you are, with what, you know, and and. Listen, you guys, all of us are limited in our time, in our resources, in our focus, in our effort, and in, and in our energy. So we need to make the decision about where we want to focus that we might be upgraded, not allow our society with their problem of technology and consumerism to dictate to us because I see Satan using that and we can't focus on some really important things and crucial things and needy things because we're so distracted by these other things that we're being told we need to upgrade in and there's no end to it. And really, they're more interested in getting your money <laughs> than they are. And really, is it helpful to you? So be careful with our world's cutting edge. That's what they call it. You want to be on the cutting edge. And some of you have heard me because I'm repeating myself right now. You can write this down. Ben Quintana. I, uh, I, this is a Ben Quintanaism. <laughs> Beware the world's cutting edge. It just might bleed you to death. And it does for some people. You guys, my question would be, what about God's upgrades in your life? What about God's upgrades? Because everything I've read and everything we sang today is letting us know that God has an upward call in our life. He wants to take you, hallelujah, from wherever you are. And I'm willing to talk to anyone, you know, uh, who's, you know, rich and famous and has all the stuff of this world and tell them that their life would be better with God than it is without him. Even though they have all that, okay? If you're already uh, silver, hallelujah, I just want you to know there is gold in God. But folks, if maybe your life isn't quite that silver yet, <laughs> maybe you're, 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 you're the, uh, you know, what was the, the comparison there? Maybe you're more like, um, oh, let's call it iron. At least you're not wood. <laughs> okay. But, you know, you can see so many more people in your mind ahead of you than, be, you know, behind you. And, 
You know, it doesn't hardly, that's not the point. The point is that God has a better place for you. That God has restoration in mind for you. That will take you from where you are and make it just a little bit better. Folks, and as long as we're alive, we need to desire God's upgrade. Desire God's upgrade in your life. Say, here I am, Lord. Don't have to wait for the hard struggles, though the hard struggles will come, and they'll remind you how much you need him. But folks, most of us would do better when things are not hard to really desire what God has for us then. Because you'll, you'll be able to better receive it then than when you're really struggling with the problem. And I feel bad for people who don't grasp that, that as soon as in their lives things are not to where they're destitute and, and desolate and barren and I'm not sure how I'm ever going to make it. Oh, now you're real focused on God. Folks, we need to be real focused on him all the time. And acknowledge that, God, thank you. You have brought me from, from, uh, from uh, uh, iron uh, to, to bronze. But, God, I see silver now. I see silver now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me close, you guys, with a reading from um, in the New Testament. Second Peter. All righty, Second Peter. The epistle. Chapter 1, starting at verse 3. It is such a beautiful portion of scripture. I invite you, you guys, to read it more carefully at home. Okay? But I just want to read it to you. For Second Peter, chapter 1, starting at verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Folks, the glory and goodness of God. Through these, the glory and goodness of God, he, God, has given us his very great and pre precious promises. All right, so because of his glory and his goodness, he's given us great and precious promises. So that through them, the great and precious promises... You may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Amen. That's good news, you guys. That's God's plan for us. For this very reason. In other words, because this is possible. Because this is available. Because this is God's plan for us. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. And to goodness, knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, love. You guys, this is God's um, upgrade. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe in your life some of these things are coming in different orders, but it doesn't change the basic principle that God is interested in taking you from where you are to taking you to that better place. It might look a little different for you than for your neighbor. Except for the process itself is be the same. It's a step-by-step, -step, you, know, um, you know, a little upgrade, linger there for a while, then be seeking another upgrade. It's God's will, you guys. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. Folks, that's the problem with sometimes with God help us as Christians is we settle when God is ready to upgrade. And some people, and I know because they've told me, I say, well, ain't nothing too much happened in five years, ten years. And I'm thinking, wow, what are you waiting on? When I know this is God's will. If you'll seek it in increasing these increasing uh, uh, increments, they'll keep you, listen to this, they'll keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, that sounds real good to me. I can be productive and effective in Jesus Christ. 
Whoever, but whoever does not have them, this increasing experience is nearsighted and blind. It's not that you're not saved. It's just you're kind of handicapped. <laughs> you're nearsighted and blind, forgetting uh, that you've been cleansed from your past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, listen, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. You know, God's plan for you. For if you do these things, you'll never stumble. And you'll receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. If you will keep seeking God's upgrade in your life. Because let me tell you, you're, you'll be blessed and those around you will be blessed. You will no longer be unproductive and ineffective in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is because of his goodness. This is for his glory. These are the things he has promised to us. We need to be that faithful people. Always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, you ought to leave here today very encouraged. Because it doesn't matter. Maybe you are, maybe you're wood. Maybe you're just starting out. But fine. He can make you iron. But if you've already been at it for a while and you're iron, hallelujah, there's bronze. <laughs> Amen. If you, 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 and you're, 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 maybe you're satisfied. Hallelujah. I am bronze in Christ. That, that's awesome. Except that his call in your life is still upward. So say, so start praying, oh God, make me silver. <laughs> make me silver spiritually. Dear God, make me gold. Hallelujah. Folks, that's what's available in Christ. That's what Satan doesn't want you to stay focused on. Hey, hey, great, upgrade in this, upgrade in that, upgrade in this. Let me tell you what. We would do good to focus mostly on our spiritual upgrade. Because all the other ones, they outdated data as soon as you get them anyway. Come on, folks. You've, you've noticed that. Well, you know, you've noticed that. What's the struggle to get that when as soon as you get it, you're going to be outdated with it? Hallelujah. But his plans for us, you guys, are really good. Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are. There's a better place in Christ Jesus. To those who have not started your journey, you have to start the journey, folks. You can't win a race that you've never entered. Can't ever win a race that you never enter. All of us entered quite simply by faith in Jesus Christ. Believing he is who he says he is, can do what he has promised to do. And we align ourselves clearly with him. Hallelujah. By faith and by identification. Jesus, I believe in you. Folks, for those of us that have done that, it's just a matter of where are you today and what's your next upgrade. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Savior, we praise you and thank you. Lord, for a wonderful time of worshiping you. Lord, we thank you again for our worship team. Uh, Lord, we thank you again, Lord, for our teaching ministry. Lord, may the children today, God, every one of them, Lord, be hearing from you. Lord, that's our heart's desire. But Lord, uh, all we can do is set an example, God. So we thank you, Lord, for our time here in the sanctuary. Lord, receiving inspiration and instruction. God, being reminded, oh Lord, it's not about the hard times. It's what we do with those hard times. God, may we come out better, Lord. That's your plan for us. Dear God, you've not promised to exclude us from difficulties. Uh, Lord, somehow you're improving us through it, or at least wanting to. God, I pray, Lord, for each person. Lord, first and foremost, dear God, that they uh, will uh, receive you, acknowledge you. Amen. Play, uh, pray a simple prayer and just invite you, Lord, in, into their lives. And truly believe, Lord, in you. God, for those of us that have done that, Lord, uh, 
Help us, dear God, to be hungry for the next upgrade. Lord, forgive us for being so distracted, dear God, by so many things of our world. Uh, Satan truly is still very sly. But Satan, we're uh, serving notice that we're going to focus on God's upgrade. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way with me. Lord, from, from wood to iron, from iron, dear God, to, to, uh, to, to bronze. Lord, from bronze to silver, silver to gold, O oh Lord. Hallelujah to the glory and the honor of your name. Lord, help us to live today like we know you <laughs> and that you have told us the truth because you have and we do know you. So we ask you, God, to be with us, Lord, throughout the remainder of this day. Help us to love well, love you well, love one another well. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Folks,